concrete beams. The most used load-bearing unit of modern construction on earth. It's the basic unit of a new generation of highway bridges. The raw ingredients that create their magic formula can be found in almost every country on earth, Kenya included. It can be lifted until you are done with lunch. Oh, no. Yet how these components are mixed together can make the difference between tragedy and triumph, like the Nairobi Expressway. Today, we go into the sands of concrete beams. Through Nairobi City's tall buildings, rises the biggest concrete structure under construction in Kenya. The new highway is 27 kilometers long. It's taking 4,000 workers and two years to build. When it becomes operational, it will be one of the most important pieces of transportation infrastructure in the Kenyan capital. The expressway is already reshaping Nairobi's landscape and it is expected that once completed, this road will change things in a city characterized by heavy traffic during peak hours. At the heart of it is a technological innovation that allows engineers to build longer and bigger bridges. One by one, traveling up the scale, we tell the incredible story behind this mega structure. Erecting a bridge quite the size of the expressway requires a material with greater shock absorbing qualities. Builders need a formula that is extremely strong yet more resistant to damage due to constant vibrations from moving vehicles. After extensive testing, architects behind the expressway will use a high-strength concrete formula. It contains slag, a byproduct of the steel industry, and microsilica, which gives the concrete added strength. The microstructure of concrete has many, many spaces between the particles that are either hollow or are filled with water. So microsilica fills these spaces, making concrete denser, more durable, and stronger. And they have the most sophisticated testing laboratories that are testing even soil. Soil, sand, everything to be sure. Because for this sort of concrete, it has to be calibrated so that the margin of error is absolutely minimized. We have those who make sure that the concrete that is used uh, for building the, the, the bridges, the piers and the pillars, it's up to standard before it can be cast, both in situ and uh, those who are called cast concrete at the site. They also make sure, just to check the supervisors and also the lab have to test that the concrete is up to the standard. It starts out like liquid, but it becomes too hard when it dries. It's been the cornerstone of engineering during the construction of the expressway. Along the new road, concrete is everywhere. It has been taking different shapes and forms the backbone of the country's newest engineering masterstroke. This road begs the question, how was it done?
Today, we take you to the factory floor where pre-stressed beams used on the expressway are produced. starts here. These builders are building the reinforcement cage using steel. They start by cutting and bending of the steel bars. High strength steel is used to resist high stresses. The concrete bars are collected and shaken down over a storage rack. They are then cut and bent to the exact shape and dimensions needed to fit the designs of the beams. The builders then assemble and tie together the bars to form the reinforcement cage. The cage is then positioned within the form that has the outer mold. Once the cage assembly is completed, workers here begin to prepare the form. Form release is then applied to each surface to ensure the final product can be easily lifted from the form. Yeah, very smooth. As this happens, metallic tubes to be used during the formation of the concrete beams are being made on the other side of the yard. are very crucial during post-tensioning. Having shifted this mold here, Miss and his team have one job, that of shifting it to the area where another beam is under construction. Remember, it gives beam its shape. Now, as they shift this heavy steel mold, Dennis and his team have to ensure one thing, utmost care. It can be very, very dangerous. Unafaa uwe ujieke kwa safety yako ujiangalie zaidi 
kuliko kazi yenyewe sababu unaweza angukiwa unaweza yani wakati mwingi unaweza angukiwa na umie sasa kwa ajili mtu unahitaji maisha ya baadaye unafaa ujilinde zaidi na kazi yenyewe uzito kama huu wa mabati nini cranes unaona hapa zinafanyika kreni kinua kitu unafaa uwe mbali aswa unafaa uangalie crane vile ina move uwe attentive na ile remote uangalie mzigo unavyopanda kiasi cha mzigo kama ki mzito unafaa uwe mbali nayo sababu ya uzito ule kikiangukiwa unaweza umia What you see here is the outer steel mold and what is popping out from here is the inner steel mold and the inside is the steel frame of the beam to be constructed here. Essentially the beams that you see along the expressway are designed here and this is how they are shaped. At this point, builders are ready to put up what we call reinforced concrete beams. But these beams have limited capacity. They can fail and collapse under immense stress. Normally, compression develops at the top part of the beam, while tension develops at the bottom. The elongation at the bottom of the beam makes it to crack. Concrete has no tensile strength. Cracks then allows in moisture and or water that corrodes both the concrete and the reinforcement bars. To ensure this do not happen, engineers here are using a technique that inserts tension into the beam. For you to do this kind of long bridges, you require concrete, reinforced concrete that is a little bit more than what we use normally in. We use reinforced concrete in. What we're using in here is pre-stress concrete in. It's a unique technology, not new to the theoreticians, so we teach it in the universities here. But there's hardly any person in Kenya producing pre-stress concrete in. Because that is concrete that is, I would say, over-reinforced. For the engineers here, the challenge is finding a way of eliminating the tensile tension and allow heavy loads to be carried in the middle of the beam. That is achieved by running a steel cable through the beam. The steel has got seven wires twisted together to make it slightly flexible. It's anchored by means of some wedges in the end which grip within the collet. They are then tensioned up by pulling on the cable. So when you let go of them, they, they actually compare the concrete to come even closer together. The reaction on that pulling of the cable is the force between the collet and the plate on the end of the beam. That puts the whole beam under compression. It is this pre-stressed force that will make these beams carry significant loads for hundreds of years. In pre-stressing, engineers are applying an external force to the beams before loads which they will be subjected to. Once the expressway is ready for use, Here, 
pre-stressing is being done after concrete is applied. It's what they call post-tensioning. Remember these pipes? Now we see how important they are to the process. As reinforcement cages are prepared, the metal pipes are run through the cage. They essentially create a duct upon which steel cables for pre-stressing run. To complete the setup, plastic pipes are run through the metallic pipes. to ensure concrete does not end up in the ducts in case the metallic pipes have holes. The surface of the outer mold is very smooth. Yeah, very smooth. Once the setup is complete, A technician or engineer conducts pre-pouring inspection to ensure confirmance with the approved drawings. Once satisfied, an approval to cast concrete is given. So much concrete is being cast here than any other construction project in Kenya today. But managing so much concrete can be hectic for the engineers. There is a very particular problem, heat. During the making of concrete from cement, water and aggregate, there is a hydration reaction that generates heat. It's not much, but it leads to cracks. Engineers must ensure this is catered for. Oh, so they've just filled the bucket here and shortly. Oh, it's lunch time. Uh -huh. So it can't be lifted until you are done with lunch. No, no, it, it, it can't stay here with the. Oh, it will, it will get in it. Oh, so they are lifting. So this, this is what you call a bucket, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's 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 a risk of even lifting it. Yeah. So the crane driver or whoever is controlling the crane has to be very careful, right? Mambia Rudi Numa. If the concrete is poured into the steel mold at one go, the concrete on the outside will cool and harden fast while in the core of the beam, the concrete will stay hot and try to expand. This could stress the concrete and make it crack. So builders here pour concrete in small individual blocks while ensuring it spreads evenly. That is where the gantry crane and the electric vibrator comes in. Uh, 
Ndiyo itokee well balance Ya, yeah, well balance na disbuki Kwa wabu ikionekana na Na sports bado wanaro Ok Na ah. kutingiza hiyo mchanga Ndiye kira mahali Na Na eh. wabu angalia mapati ya nani Siyo wana hiyo kasi smooth eh. Na wabu itoke juwa hiyo kama hiyo As the pouring continues into the day The expressway has reached a milestone Over 90% of the road is done. When completed, this mega structure will stretch from James Gishuru Junction in Westlands to Mulolongo, Machakos County. Fifteen kilometers of its twenty-seven kilometers will be elevated. cushion, a minor but crucial modification to the standard reinforced concrete. Once the casting of concrete is done, it's left to cool and harden before being pre-stressed. It's what will make the expressway to stay stronger and durable. This is the Kenyan historian, and my name is Anoxicoli.